or three types of plate boundaries. So we have the divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. A divergent boundary is a place where two plates move away from each other. As the plates move away from each other, the rocks eventually break and suddenly move, producing earthquakes. Molten rocks from inside the earth comes up through the cracks forming volcanoes. Some divergent boundaries are located on land. An example of a divergent boundary on land is the East African Rift Zone. There, the land is being pulled apart and a huge valley has formed. Through time, water has filled up the widening cracks in the ground, resulting in linear lakes such as the Lake Tanganyika and Lake Nyasa. But most of the divergent boundaries are found at the seafloor such as the one at the bottom of the Red Sea. The Arabian Peninsula has already broken off from the African landmass, resulting in the formation of the Red Sea. As the plates continue to move from each other, the Red Sea will also grow in size. A convergent boundary is a place where two plates move toward each other. A trench is an example of a convergent boundary. The two plates are moving toward each other may be both oceanic plates. It is also possible that one plate is oceanic while the other is continental. An oceanic plate is a plate that is carrying oceanic crust while the continental plate carries continental crust. When two oceanic plates move towards each other, the plates will collide and the denser plate will sink under the other. This process is called subduction. During the process, some rocks melt. The molten rocks rise and erupt out of a volcano. Such is how the volcanoes in the Philippines were formed. A similar thing happens when an oceanic plate and a continental plate collide. The denser oceanic plate subducts under the continental plate. In time, volcanoes are formed on the edge of the continent. The volcanoes along the western coast of the South America were formed this way. In fact, all volcanoes along the Ring of Fire were formed by the collision of plates along a trench. Trenches are also the birthplaces of earthquakes and tsunamis. As one plate slips downward into the trench, the edge of the other plate is dragged down too. Later, when friction is overcome, the bent portion snaps upward and an earthquake is produced. The sudden movement pushes the water above and a tsunami could be triggered. Thus, coastal communities that face the locations of trenches should be prepared for possible earthquake and tsunamis. When continental plates collide, the land is elevated and a mountain range is formed. This is what happened a long time ago when Indian rammed into Asia. The land that was caught in between lifted little by little to form the Himalayas. That was how the world's tallest peak, Mount Everest, came into being. To sum up, Many geologic processes takes place along convergent boundaries, volcanism, earthquakes, and mountain building. In a transform boundary, the plates are not moving away or moving toward each other. The plates are simply sliding past each other. The plates meet at a transform fault. As you might imagine, plates do not slide past each other easily. These plate boundaries experience massive earthquakes. The world's best known transform fault is the San Andreas Fault in California. At this fault, the Pacific and North American plates grind past each other. Transform plate boundaries are common as offsets along mid-ocean ridges. They are very small compared to transform faults on land. Transform plate boundaries are different from the other two types of plate boundaries. At divergent plate boundaries, new oceanic crust is formed. At convergent boundaries, old oceanic crust is destroyed. But at transform plate boundaries, crust is neither created nor destroyed. Some volcanoes located far from any boundary. An example is the chain of volcanoes that form the Hawaiian Islands. The main islands of the archipelago include Hawaii, 
Maui, Oahu, and Kauai. Scientists have discovered two interesting patterns among the islands. First, the rocks become older and older as one goes from one island to the next. Thus, the rocks are youngest on Hawaii Islands, older on Maui, older still on Oahu, and oldest on Kauai. Second, the volcanoes on Hawaii Island are active while those on the other three islands are inactive. In the mantle, there is a source of molten rocks called a hot spot. The molten rock then rises, pierces through the plate, and forms a volcano on top. The hot spot is thought to be stationary, but the plate above it is moving. In time, the volcano will be carried away and no longer be above the hot spot. The volcano will be then inactive. In the meantime, a new volcano will form over the hot spot. Thus, as the plate continues to move, a line of volcanoes are formed, but only the volcano that is presently on top of the hotspot will be active. The rest will become extinct.